Hey, welcome to our new devotional series on the book of Exodus, 40 chapters. This is pretty, it's going to be pretty intense. And I'm going to be using the NASB 95 New American Standard, but you can use whatever you have. But let me read these first five verses. Now, these are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob. They came each one with his household, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All the persons who came from the loins of Jacob were 70 in number, but Joseph was already in Egypt. So the book of Exodus begins with uh, the Hebrew letter Vav. Uh, it is it translated now or and in your translation, and really this is a continuation of the book of Genesis. It's kind of like Genesis scroll two. That Vav there is a conjunction and, and so everything in Genesis, the first book, the book of Genesis, everything coming out there to here is like scroll one and. This is kind of like scroll two. In fact, these first five books of the Bible, the, the Hebrew practice is always to name your book of the Bible based on the some a key word in that first line or that first sentence. So Genesis is Bereshit, uh, Exodus is Va'ilash uh, Shemot. It is the names, the names, the 70 names here at the front that we just talked about that come out of Egypt. It begins with names, and at the end, by the way, when we get further down into the book, we're going to find the high priest. Uh, which is representing J Jesus, he has the names of Israel on his garments. So the names, this is the book to the, we're going to go ahead and call it Exodus, but the names is the way that a lot of uh, Hebrew observers would look at it. God never forgets people. God doesn't forget you. He doesn't forget your name. You or I might forget someone's name. God never forgets. He knows and he cares and he's tracking on the name question. He knows who you are. You may feel alone and isolated. Nobody knows who I am. God's forgotten me. Nobody hasn't. He knows your name. Another thing that's interesting is that these first five books of the Bible are considered, they're called the Torah, although there's other things that are called Torah, any of these laws, but the first five books is Torah. And so uh, we're looking at one of the really, truly foundational books of the Bible. Now, let me share with you a little outline here. Here's a slide giving an outline of the chapters in Exodus. Now you'll notice that in writing this book that Moses uses two genres, two gender, two kinds of writing, basically narrative and law. And the first half of the book is dominated by narrative. Now when we say narrative, we mean we're talking about its stories. It's just stories. Uh, and there are fictional stories and non-fictional stories. We of course take this as a history unless there was some serious reason not to. God is telling us uh, the very history of his people, very literally. So it's dominated by stories in this first part. The latter half of the book is going to be dominated by, I guess we could say, law. And those each genre is a little bit different. You, you, you interpret things differently. You interpret a menu or a phone book uh, differently than you interpret a fiction or a poetry. Uh, there are different, different each kind of writing, they, they can all be inspired but we, we just recognize they have different approaches the writer's taken in. There's different dynamics in different kinds of writing. So it's, it's interesting to look at genres. We'll say more about that later on. But uh, remember, all of it is just as inspired. They're just different kinds of writing. Now, God is not inclined to leave us in Egypt. In the, in the Bible, Egypt often represents the world, the world with its false gods, its secular gods. Babylon is kind of like false religious gods. Egypt is more like false secular gods. You know, you've heard of the pleasures of Egypt, the luxury of Egypt. And so today, as we look out at our world today, what do we have? We're kind of in a space where convenience is a challenge. Those shiny objects, you know, the, the things in life that have a lot of chrome on them, uh, the devil comes to us and uses that a lot of times. It's just so much more convenient to do it the way that, of course, is going to wind up being destructive compared to the way that might take longer or be more detailed and hold us to more responsibility. So beware of the luxuries of Egypt. Uh, God does not plan to leave his people in Egypt, but to bring them on out. And we're going to be seeing that as we carry right on. Egypt can be used in the Bible to represent kind of an atheistic view, kind of a life without God thing. It's just us and our luxuries, us and our pillows and grapes, right? But you know, all the shiny objects in Egypt, they do not have enough of anything to give life real meaning. And so God is the one. We're designed for holiness. God will give us meaning. And so we're here to see what God has to say.
the one actual God, he will systematically eviscerate all the false gods of Egypt and show the people the way that he has for them. As they recover uh, their, who they are, you know, as they leave uh, the bondage of Egypt and come out into the liberty that God has for them. And he has liberty for you and I too. Hey, I want to let you know, we're going to have a little live stream every Monday morning uh, for those that are interested, and I'll be in the chat. Let's plan to make it 11 o'clock every Monday morning, and we're going to meet together, and we can you can put something in the chat. We'll interact with basically mostly with the devotionals we've gone through that week. And I'm just inviting you to come and join in, and we can have a little a little community together as we think together on some insights God has given us. So we'll have a short chat every Monday at 11 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, America Eastern Time, and come and join us in the chat. So be planning on that, and we'll see you.